Hi, Christine. Hi, Aubrey. What's up, everybody? <laughs> We're here with one of my favorite human beings, Aww. Christine Hassler, in from L.A. to hang out here with the Austin family. What's going on? I love being here. This is nice. I always feel very comfortable. <laughs> For sure. I love being in on it. Such, like, the energy of this place is always inspiring. Yeah, I love it, too. When I've been traveling a bunch, and I miss like this is this is home for sure for me not just austin but like in this building yep. you know hanging out this is another another type of family so you feel it when you walk in yeah, you really do for sure for yeah. sure it's it's a great it's a great situation you know, i was talking yesterday on uh, fighter and the kid podcast and when you can get your passion your vocation and your mission all to line up and be the same thing mm-hmm. you know there's nothing better than that yeah because the people show up the ideas show up the people you want to serve show up it's just like yeah. i always when people talk about that whole like work life balance thing there's always that like def- that hyphen or slash mm-hmm. between work and life and to me there's not really separation it all goes together because it doesn't really feel like work when right. it's all lined yeah. up I like mean, that the best, the best case is you're able to collapse the dualism and yeah. it's just work and life collapse and the dualism leave it to aubrey <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure i love it yeah because people say oh yeah you have to go back to work and i was like have to or get to get to you know that's the key but it's not always that way you know for you know the way i've kind of been organizing it and looking at it you know you have your mission which is mm-hmm. the overriding purpose and your what you want to leave the world like you know after your time here and the process of doing that and then you have your vocation you know which is what you're actually doing mm-hmm. to help achieve that mission and achieve the resources to get there and then you have your passion and sometimes your passion and vocation just won't match right you know, maybe you'll be really good at some certain skill and that's going to help further the mission more because you'll reach more people, you'll accumulate more resources. Yep. But your passion might be, you know, fishing or crocheting or right. something like that. And so you have to keep them separate and that's fine too. Totally fine. I think you have to know who you are too because for those three things to collapse, it, it, you have to know if you're somebody that really wants to lead to lead a vision, to lead a mission. And there are some people that really feel called to do that. And then there are some people that are like, no, I'm an awesome part of supporting that. Like I want to be part of the team. And neither is better or worse. It's just really knowing who you are. Yeah. Because I think when you try to be someone you're not, you just keep running into obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And Mm -hmm. I think there's also a lot of pressure out there in these kind of self-help business things. Like everybody should be an entrepreneur. I know. Everybody doesn't need to be an entrepreneur. No, not at all. It's a tough road. It's beautiful when it works out. You know, like, oh, yeah, you get to make your own hours. Right. But yeah, you right. never get off. <laughs> Ever. Either. You're never it, off. Mentally, you're never off either. No, it's, it's like, like you're always. working 100% mm-hmm. of the time. So it's mm-hmm. it's a trade-off. It's a beautiful thing. I wouldn't have it any other way. But then also, I think, like, the reason I wanted to always take this path is I just didn't see anybody doing exactly mm-hmm. what I wanted. But if there was, a, you know, someone I truly admired in the space, I'd have been happy to saddle up and... Absolutely. You know, run marketing or, you know, contribute to a mission that was, you know, what I was interested in. So I think that's so true because that's actually what got me to write my first book too. I read all the books out there that were supposed to help me with what I was going through and there wasn't anything. So I was like, well, I guess I have to do it. Mm-hmm. But if I'd found someone that was doing it, I would have, I would have loved to support or do right. the same thing. And I also think it's like knowing what your values are. My top value is freedom. I have it. Actually, this was a gift from Jill over here. It's on, on this necklace. And when I was working for somebody else, I just felt this just suffocation. Sure. You know? And I, I was like, I really – freedoms – and it doesn't mean no responsibility. It doesn't mean I can't commit to things. But that freedom – to feel like I don't have any restrictions on what I can create is so much of what really inspires me to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I remember, you know, I, I ran a marketing company for seven years and I would have certain projects that I would take all the way to the finish line, just pour mm-hmm. everything I had in there. And some, for some ridiculous reason, you know, the CEO of whatever company I'd be working for would just be like, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? We're not doing that? Like, we're not even going to try it? You know, and it's just so this crazy. Yeah, it's this crazy. After that happened a few times, I realized, like, well, it is not going to be very rewarding working for individuals mm-hmm. like that who, have, at the very end, for their own personal reasons, can just sweep the rug out from under all of this work. And it's that's a challenging situation. But if you get in the right spot, mm-hmm. you know, it's it can be a beautiful part of the process. Absolutely. Just, you know. Yeah, pulling, putting your shoulder into some cause greater than yourself. I mean, that's that vision, a special thing mm-hmm. as well. It's bigger than us. Yeah. 
Well, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about while you're here and is I came across um, a poem and I wrote a response and it's talking about the sacred feminine and mm -hmm. sacred masculine. And I thought we could do a little deep dive on that, but I was going to read the poems here as kind of like a jump off yeah. point and then uh, we'll get into that. Sounds good. All right. So I was going through and someone, I think on my Facebook message sent me a link to this poem <clears throat> and it's called a wild woman is not a girlfriend. She's a relationship with nature. It's by Allison Nappy. But can you love me in the deep, in the dark, in the thick of it? Can you love me when I drink from the wrong bottle and slip through the slip through the crack in the floorboard? Can you love me when I'm bigger than you? When my presence blazes like the sun does, when it hurts to look directly at me? Can you love me then too? Can you love me under the starry sky, shaved and smooth, my skin like liquid moonlight? Can you love me when I'm howling and furry, standing on my haunches, my lower lips stained with the blood of my last kill? When I call down the lightning, when the sidewalks are singed by the soles of my feet, can you love me then still? What happens when I freeze the land and cause the dirt to harden over all the pomegranate seeds we've planted? Will you trust that spring will return? Will you believe me when I tell you I will become a raging river and spill myself upon your dreams and call them to the surface of your life? Can you trust me, even though you cannot tame me? Can you love me, even though I am all that you fear and admire? Will you fear my shifting shape? Does it frighten you when my eyes flash like your camera does? Do you fear they will capture your soul? Are you afraid to step into me? The meat-eating plants and flowers armed with poisonous darts are not in my jungle to stop you from coming, not you. So do not worry. <clears throat> they belong to me, and I have invited you here. Stay to the path revealed in the moonlight and arrive safely to the hut of Baba Yaga, the wild old wise one. She will not lead you astray if you are pure of heart. You cannot be with the wild one if you fear the rumbling of the ground, the roar of a cascading river, the startling clap of thunder in the sky. If you want to be safe, go back to your room. The night sky is not for you. If you want to be torn apart, come in. Be broken open and devoured. Be set ablaze in my fire. I will not leave you as you have come, well-dressed in finely threaded sweaters that keep out the cold. I will leave you naked and biting, leave you clawing at the sheets, leave you surrounded by owls and hawks and flowers that only bloom when no one is watching. So come to me and be healed in the unbearable lightness and darkness of all that you are. There is nothing in you that can scare me, nothing in you I will not use to make you great. A wild woman is not a girlfriend. She is a relationship with nature. She is the source of all your primal desires. She is the wild whipping wind that uproots the poisonous corn stalks on your neatly tilled farm. She will plant pear trees in the wake of your disaster. She will see to it that you shall rise again. She is the lover who restores you to your own wild nature. Oh, that just like <coughs> activates something inside of me that like is so hard to articulate because there's just something so... <sighs> It's just truth. Like right. as a woman hearing that, it's just truth. And it's like, I remember the first time you shared that to me, it was just like, yes, yes, yes. Like that's, that's it. That's it. Because the feminine I feel like has been very, very suppressed for many, 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 many years. Yeah. And so much of the, the shadow of the feminine has come out instead of this, this true embodiment of what the divine feminine is. So explain is. what the, what you think the shadow of the feminine is. Well, is. so... <clears throat> The shadow of the feminine kind of looks like things like bitchiness, manipulation, using sexuality as a way to get things as a ploy, as, as a lure, um, gossip, insecurity, victimy type neediness, that mm -hmm. real neediness. Um, a lot of sort of what looks like the hot mess. Mm -hmm. which is sort of like men, it's sort of shiny to men. <laughs> but then when you dive deeper, it's like, oh, wow. So it's like that. It's, and it's all the unexpressed aspects of the feminine that, that come out in ways that are more the shadow side. Right. And it's not good, bad, right, or wrong. Like I don't have judgment on the shadow side. You know, to know light, we have to know dark. So we, a lot of times we express through that because that's how we learn. But because I think the feminine has been so suppressed, and has been conditioned to be good, 
like this wild woman has been lost mm -hmm. over the years because think of how many women were burned at the stake or you yeah, know that's, in prison that can't or be under, that can't be underestimated. Oh. I mean, you have millions of people during the Inquisition, probably the most tapped in females. Yep, those living in the wild, working with herbs. You know, healing people in their village. Connected to the earth. Connected to mm -hmm. the earth. All of those, any one of those criteria, dead. 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 Not only dead, but tortured, dead, you're lying, killed. Like, right. you have millions of those women killed in Europe, are the estimations. Yep. And what does that do to those kind of lineages, those knowledge lineages that, and also the idea that. Yeah. And not only the physical killing, but then the just overriding suppression of these male-dominated religions. I mean, mm -hmm. all of them. All of the desert religions have a very patriarchal Absolutely. structure. You Absolutely. know, it's all about God, Yahweh, Allah. You know, it's it's this male figure with no, you know, respect for the balance of the mother. Exactly. And so our earth is completely unbalanced. Like mm -hmm. I think I'm so excited to be alive in this time because I feel like this is a time when the feminine is coming back. And we, if we sort of look at the feminist movement, that first push rode on the energy of anger, but it needed to ride on the energy of anger. And there was sort of like an againstness energy to that. But I think we're shifting out of that. But we needed that to kind of get momentum going to sort of get the feminine to, to speak again. And now what I see is the feminine rising up is more coming back to this wild woman is yeah. more the bringing the creativity, the collaboration, the expression and all those things back. But I think, you know, as a woman and just speaking to a lot of women, a lot of women are really scared either consciously or unconsciously to really be the fullest expression of themselves because at a, at a deep level, will we be killed? And then add to that, we still have our, in our wiring that in order to survive, we need the man. Because if you go back again to like cave woman days and all those things and these patriarchal societies that had the women subservient, you needed a man to survive or you needed to be chosen. Like your identity was so much wrapped up in that. So I think so much of the feminine has been distracted by that. And so now it's like, huh, what is the purpose of the feminine? Because for so long it was to be subservient to be what we were told we were expected to be. But I think a lot of women right now are feeling a deeper sense of purpose. And so much of, I think that purpose is really bringing the divine feminine back. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. You know, and, and as you talk about the anger of the feminist movement at a certain point, that kind of Malcolm X figure, which is, you know, rivaling support and anger is detrimental. Yes. It's going to, it's going to create opposition. Anger creates opposition, you know, inherently. Whereas that, Martin Luther King voice was so much more effective, mm -hmm. which is a voice of resistance out of love. Yeah. You know, and that's the voice that needs to come through. And I think, <clears throat> I think a lot of, you know, a lot of the issues that men have is they see that, that kind of the radical side, same with, you know, some religious fanatics or mm -hmm. anybody, they'll see the radical side and just say, oh, this fucking feminist movement or, you know, they'll see things that get, that push the boundaries like so far that they yeah. that they reject it. Whereas that that message, the core message, I think I, you're absolutely right, needs to come out of just kind of a deep love, self love, and and yeah. love in general. Like any kind of anger is going to be destined to create a response. Well, I'm curious about what you think of this. So, because I think a lot about this, these things, I think the masculine is a little confused right now because it's being disrupted. You know, we're seeing so many paradigms breaking down. We can see it in our, like in America, especially in our economy and so many institutions, like the old structures and paradigms are sort of breaking down. And there is this rise of feminine. And when we talk masculine and feminine, that doesn't mean, oh, if you're a man, you're only in masculine. Yeah, if you're, talking yeah, about the archetypes you're talking the about the archetypes and the polarities. And so we all have both inside of us. <clears> and so <throat> as, as kind of more feminism has been, coming through and not in the bra burning way. Mm -hmm. um, I have found that a lot of men are, are kind of confused. Like, what does it mean to be a man today? What do women want? What kind of woman do I want? Like, how do I, you know, be a man in the world today? Like, what does that even look like and mean? So I feel like even as the feminine is coming up, there's also been sort of this deconstruction, reconstruction of the masculine happening. Have you found that? I have found that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's, um, it's interesting because it's, 
And I think it's one of the reasons why I wrote the response to Mm -hmm. that poem from the masculine side is because there's also the sacred masculine, which has been ignored. And then the shadow of the masculine comes, which is oppression, dominance, violence, power, Mm -hmm. greed, you know, all of these attributes of the shadow of the masculine, like I'm going to control everything with force instead of allow everything space with love. Like that's the difference. And I think what has happened is, is a lot of times as a reaction, as a retraction from the shadow, because I think a lot of men have seen the ugliness and women have seen the ugliness of that. They've just retracted from their power Mm -hmm. entirely. So they're left largely impotent, you know, both figuratively and literally, you know, where they just aren't in their power at all. So they just surrender all of it. And they're just these noodly, noodly Mm -hmm. floating in the breeze men, you know? And and that was a you know that was an improper response, but it was a response to this to the dominance of the shadow masculine. Yep. And so what needs to happen on both sides is that sacred masculine, which is an embrace of all of your power, but channeled in the right direction. Exactly, because the know? same thing happens opposite for women. So women go into the alpha male, right? right. So so many women have become quote unquote independent, but what that often looks like is you know controlling dominating. I've got to do everything on my own. And, and there's a big, um, th- there's emasculation of men that I see happens. Like 100%. it just, it, it like boggles my mind that even on television shows, you really like, it's okay for a woman to just totally make fun of her husband or boyfriend or whatever. And everybody mm-hmm. laughs at it. And we just, ha ha, make fun of his outfit or this or that. And those little things are And talk about what a, what a hassle it is what to have has- sex with him. Exactly. Oh, I'm going to have to have sex with you tonight. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I better get really drunk or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. it may be. Might be your lucky night. <laughs> I, know. Oh, ha, ha. I know. Like, like it's like obligatory right. rather than this sacred thing. Right. And I think a lot of that is just this leftover of the anger that so many, I think, women feel mm. against the masculine. And to me, that that hurts my heart. It's like, we've got to resolve that yeah. and, and get this againstness. It's not better or worse. We're not in competition with each other. Like the world does not exist without the masculine and feminine being in harmony. And we're, we're seeing that. And so we all have a responsibility to, to harmonize that within ourselves, you know, to know that both parts exist and also look at like where we're carrying anger or judgment or any againstness because that's not going to get us anywhere nope. at all. No, nope, it won't. What you resist persists. Absolutely. You know? So whatever that whatever that force, you know, you're angry against, you're not going to get the result that you're, you're looking not. for. And, and you know, we need both. We need both both sides in their power. We do. And I think women women don't trust the feminine. <laughs> I won't say all women, but a lot of women don't trust the feminine. Meaning we don't trust the power of surrender mm-hmm. and receiving and vulnerability. And really being that wild woman, Mm -hmm. because will we be judged? Will we be safe? Like, is there the masculine, either in another person or inside ourselves or even energetically, that can hold the presence for that? Right. And because we've seen things like power and force and structure and systems and doing and doing and doing, quote unquote, work and external reality, so many women just go into that because they don't really trust, wow, like if I really relax and deepen in my feminine is it going to work? Right. Will I still get stuff done? Well, and probably that's, you know, these memories, ancestral memories of it not working. Right. And you know, being killed. Being yeah. killed, like literally. So it's a lot of trauma that the world is healing from mm-hmm. now, but it seems to be healing at an exponential rate. It is. And that's what, that gives me goosebumps. That's what's so cool. It's, yeah. it's like, I think a lot of people have you know, I believe that we have we have a soul that has multiple journeys. And I think a lot of us have agreed to come back during this time to help awaken this and to help bring balance back to the world. Because you know, we have to. I mean, it's externally being reflected in our environment. Like we're totally out of sync here. Yeah, it's like that Lord of the Rings archetype where all of a sudden Middle Earth is in trouble. Yeah, exactly. So, like the elves <laughs> come and the dwarves come and it's all like, all right, we're I know. Come. I want to be a fairy, not an elf or a dwarf though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a pretty hot. I, I guess know. so. Be, I guess so. An elf, elf. Is, an elf is better than a yeah, dwarf. Those, if I had to take those my elves pick. are pretty hot. You got the Liv Tyler elf. You got That's the true. Queen of the Forest That's elf. She's she's good looking. <laughs> All right, so let's go. So I'm going to read my response yeah, as yeah. we talk about the sacred masculine and uh, something that inspired me after reading that poem. 
A wild man is not a boyfriend, he is a force. Can you love me in the blinding heat of a birthing star when I shower warmth on distant moons? Can you love me in the hole of the cosmic black where no one can reach me, not even you? Can you love me then too? Can you love me when I drag buffalo skulls through the dirt for days to the rhythm of an ancient drum? Will you love me if my beard hides the scars in my heart from battles I cannot explain? Will you love me when I lack courage, when I am defeated, when I won't let you patch my wounds? Will you trust me when I smell of sweet grass and sage, and when I stink of whiskey and sweat? When I drink from the cup and play an astral light, will you anchor me to home? What happens when my words don't work, and I can speak with only my eyes? Can you love me enough to let me go, without asking me where I'll be? I am no poodle to lay groomed at a leash on your feet. I am the wolf that fetches the bones of truth. A wild man is not a boyfriend. He's not built for animal husbandry. He is a force. He is a cause for an effect. He is a mission. Are you afraid to let me inside you? Not just my flesh, but my soul. The wild man is neither burglar nor vandal. I will not take anything from you. I will not trample on sprouting seeds or pick flowers as a trophy. I am the sun on flooded fields and the fire for tangled webs. Don't be scared, lover, mother, maiden, crone. Take me as I am. Even if I have the power to destroy worlds, I will not destroy you. A wild man is a protector, a father, a warrior for all that is good. When the chaos seeks to obliterate you, shearing your flesh from bone, I will hold all the pieces together in love until you are ready to reassemble. When your seas boil and your winds throw cars at cornfields, I will wait patiently for you to catch my eye so that both of us can laugh. When hell opens up the fiery gates and sends all the cosmos against you, I plant my heels deep in the ground. I lay my shield low. My sword is sharp then, my love. The steel sings sweetly. With the smile, hokahe, my last breath, a farewell kiss. Today is a good day to die. For ours is the oldest love affair, the greatest story ever told. Cupid and Psyche, Shiva and Shakti, you and I. Same, same, but different. Would we have it any other way? A wild man is not a boyfriend. He is a force. Hmm. So like when you read that, and I want to know what happens inside of, inside of you, but what happens inside of me when you read that is, is like everything relax and relaxes. Yeah. And like everything softens. <clears throat> it's it's like a reminder to me of what could and should be mm-hmm. you know and it's i don't i mean it brings up an emotional response for me mm-hmm. because it's you know I, like i don't usually tear up in movies like the notebook or the sappy kind of movies but i'll cry every time in braveheart or 300 yeah. or these movies where you're sacrificing mm-hmm. for something much greater than yourself you know and that's <clears throat> that's what draws that, that out of me. Like that's what opens me wide open. That's the truth for me, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think a part of the problem is, is that men don't have a mission that they believe in that much. And that's why we like those movies and these stories. And you have this oppressive force that you know is an enemy. Great. You know, like men thrive in that condition. Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, this, these bad people are going to take my home. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll show up, you know, and I think in our world that does, it doesn't exist. Like it's just not part of our paradigm. We don't have a clear enemy. There's not a clear dragon coming to destroy us. Yeah. So we're le- generally lacking mission and lacking an understanding of what our purpose is. And um, so we're lacking that ability to tap into that altruistic side, you know, that ability to hold, you know, to hold something greater than ourself. And, uh, And that just always, that always gets to me because even though it's not tangible, it's all around us. It's everything that's going on in the world. It's all of the corruption and, and grief and suffering and the way that the structures have been built. It's more abstract, but it's nonetheless causing as much suffering as any, you know, army that ever swept through the land, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And how do you think, um, the feminine can support the masculine in really clarifying and, and being on purpose? I think without the sacred feminine, the question of why, mm. 
is never answered. Why? Why? Why do this? Why mission? Fuck it. I'll just go back to the light. Mm-hmm. Like this is the home of the feminine. This is the home. Yeah. Like if we don't see, if we don't see the sacred feminine, what the fuck are we doing? Like why are we even fighting? Like what's the point? Mm-hmm. You know, let's go back and we'll be light bodies and we'll fucking chill in the right. place where we're comfortable. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but and so we don't see that often, and so we just kind of we screw around and you know get drunk and get money and. Buy go, shit. Go for the low hanging fruit. Ego. For, things. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but because we're not, we don't understand what we're fighting for. Yeah. And why. And I think that's, that's a big part. I mean, so really, there's, there's tons of ways that, you know, the feminine supports the masculine, the masculine supports the feminine. But the most important of which is just, it's the deepest question of all like inspiration. Like, why? Yeah. Why are we doing it? any great, and again, going back to a movie any great movie you have to see that you have to see either the home the family the land the woman is always the reason yeah you know because that's what that's what inspires us you yeah know? yeah well and and as you're talking i'm just thinking like for people listening out there that want to be in a relationship or in a relationship it's like how does this apply to like relationships between men and women mostly romantic but just any relationship i feel like um Oftentimes we make the other purpose, the other person, our purpose or our mission. We get so invested in what are you going to do for me? What am I going to do for you? And kind of play out our issues and all this stuff rather than having a bigger vision. Like we were talking in the beginning about how we need a vision for our life Mm -hmm. in terms of what we want to create. But I think we also need a vision for our relationship and, and what do we agree that we're both looking at together and how together side by side looking in the same direction do we go and achieve that because i think purpose is really important for the feminine too Mm -hmm. you know it's definitely the masculine that has that like warrior go for it but but it also for the divine feminine it's like we we need that purpose as well so we don't make the man our purpose which i think is what happened in so for centuries and centuries and centuries it was like he became the purpose rather than what's the shared vision and how do we collectively work toward that Mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of relationships suffer and get so into the blame and cheating and blah, blah 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 stuff of relationship is because there's not that unified vision that both people are excited about and actually really committed to a shared mission yeah, you know, exactly. Like what are what are we in here? So you end up focused on all of this trivial shit, controlling right. each other's pleasure, controlling each other's emotion, time, whatever. And this these little games, like, uh, what are you worried about? You yeah. know, like, what are you both? Here? What's the combined mission? Because yeah. it's it's going to be way more effective together. Yeah, and and way more fun way because more then fun. you don't have to deal with like jealousy and and all those things that just like take a relationship take all the consciousness out of a relationship mm-hmm. honestly because yeah. i think we need to we need to upgrade how we perceive relationship and what the purpose of it is because for so long i think we've bought into well you know you're supposed to get uh, we've we bought into a formula yeah. of what a relationship is supposed to be like versus what is it going to create and how can two people together in any form make more of an impact than just doing it on your own yeah Absolutely. So, all right. So if you were going to say, you know, if you have some young women listening to this podcast, you know, like what are the steps to becoming the wild woman, the the sacred feminine and cultivating that? Yeah. You know, like how, how does one go about getting in touch with that element, archetypal nature? Well, we were talking about this last night. I think it comes down to emotional strength. Like, and emotional strength is not about being strong and just pushing things down. It's about realizing we are emotional beings. You know, we're not like spirit bodies. We have like these physical Uh beings and we have emotions. And as women, and I'm making general statements, this doesn't apply to everyone, but as women, we are emotional creatures. And a lot of times our emotions can get the best of us if we don't really learn how to see them as messengers and how to respond to them and really how to release them and manage them. Because what happens with so many women is they end up repressing and suppressing so many of their primary emotions, like anger and sadness are the big ones. And especially anger, because if you think about it, women 
we we're not we're not allowed to really express anger growing up. And when you were reading the the Wild Woman poem, you know, in that like she was raw, and there were times when uh-huh. she was angry, and she had like I think it was like blood on her lips or whatever uh-huh. it was. Like there's that that fiery passion, and I think it's important for women to get in touch with that aspect so it doesn't get suppressed or repressed. And so. Right. I talk to a lot of women about doing emotional release work where you're like stream of consciousness writing and ripping it up or, you know, doing some kind of facilitated anger burn where you just go and you just let that raw warrior woman out there. Like every woman needs to yell and scream and hit something from time to time and mm-hmm. and get that out so we don't project it onto the people in our life, especially boyfriends, husbands, kids, like whatever it may be. And so we don't end up kind of irritable and bitchy and depressed. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, emotional strength and emotional awareness, really learning that there's value in all of that. And then another thing I'd say is uh, women have also been told that we value relationship over purpose. That's one of the things that's in a lot of the masculine feminine teaching. And I don't know that I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has to be an either or or above or anything because I would say I value purpose and I value relationship. Right. And there's no competition. They're just, they're both, it's like that work-life balance thing. Like there's no differentiation. So really knowing what your purpose is and not expecting the man to fulfill that to you for you because so many women get distracted by relationship. And I think that's another conditioning we're breaking right now is not getting thrown off purpose. I mean, I've seen a lot of women have so much purpose and these things they want to create in the world. And then a man comes in and they like put it on the back burner and they forget about it. And they just become about him or getting married or whatever it may be. And all those things are beautiful and great. But why leave your purpose behind? Sure. Like that's an important part of, of why we're here. So Know your purpose, know your heart's desire, know you're here to make an impact. And then finally, some kind of spiritual practice to connect you back to the goddess, to connect mm-hmm. you back to the divine feminine, that that sacred mother and the earth. I think it's equally important for women to be spiritually connected and expanded and, and, and have that sense of oneness and also be connected to the earth. Something primal, something that gets you in nature, that gets you in your body so you can experience that duality of that expansiveness and that groundedness. Yeah, no doubt. I think, you know, when you're talking about the purpose, I think you're you're very right. And I think the relationship, you know, one aspect of the relationship, I think is very important that you have a shared, you mm-hmm. have a shared mission. Because what I also see is, you know, you have you know, you have a relationship where maybe the man has his, has his, maybe it's not even mission, maybe it's just vocation, but let's say, let's assume he does have a mission and then he doesn't value his partner's ability to help him in that process. Like I'm going to go to work and then I'm going to take care of my lady when I'm done. Yeah. You know, so he doesn't value her part in that process. So then that leaves her to say, well, if I'm not able to contribute to the, to his mission, I got to find some other mission on the side so i'm going to do this little thing and then end up you end up having two missions in one relationship and that's it's possible but i think there's real magic when you both come together with this shared vision and say all right combine the two of us what is the best way you know that we can get this done whether it's the man supporting you know the woman in Mm -hmm. in achieving whatever ends that that she needs to achieve for the mission or the woman supporting the man or both of them doing it separately But I think having that, you know, like what is our combined, you know, our combined goal? Yeah. And then, because then that, that cuts through all of the other, all of the other riffraff. It does. Like how are we both contributing to this? You and know? I think that even applies to raising kids. Sure. You know, what's your vision for your family versus like, you know, arguing over making decisions for the kids or whatever. I, I know very few families that sit down and actually create a vision. For, for for how they want to raise their kids, for what they want their family to contribute, all those yeah. things. It's like a good team. You know, yeah. if you have a team and the whole team buys into the only goal this team has is to win the game, right? Then the team works together. It doesn't matter who scores the goals. It doesn't matter if you have an opportunity to pass to somebody else who's going to score and get the glory. You just do it because you have a shared mission, you know. But if you have a team that is not doesn't have a shared mission, everybody's just going to try and get their stats, right? You know, they all have different agendas. This person's trying to show off here. This person, and the team sucks, and it's not as effective, right? You know, and so yeah, I think that's I think probably when you're coming together in a relationship, that's just a really underrated aspect. 
you know, of what you're really looking for. Like, all right, what well, what's, you know, what do you want to do in the world? Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's settle that out before mm-hmm. we start figuring out, you know, a lot of this other yeah. stuff. And, and I think too, that also depends on how much work you've done on your own before you get into partnership, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you haven't cleared out a lot of your big core limiting beliefs and issues, because we all have like that old mom, dad, past limiting belief stuff that we have to work a little through. And if we attract someone when we're still kind of not that awake, yeah. then we're going to play out those issues right. with that person a lot. So another thing I'd say to people listening, um, you asked me about women, but to anybody is, you know, spend some quality time on your own, sure, cleaning your shit out basically so that you're really, really clear about what you want to create, not what you want to play out with someone. Because yeah. do you want to have like an issue-driven relationship? Because then it's really hard to be focused on the mission because you're just triggering each other all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's hard to be like, oh, what's our mission when we're just, you know, fighting. Yeah. So like spend some time on your own. Be that quality partner with yourself and 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 then attract someone from that place. Yeah. And I guess if I was going to give, you know, men advice, I think it's it's similar to exactly what you were just saying there. Like there's so much trying to prove something to – to ourself, mm-hmm. you know, and it's trying to prove we're tough, trying to prove we're this, trying to, and it's this trying rather this than this embrace and letting go and acceptance of our own, of our own power, of our own, you know, invincibility. Like we look up and we think of strength, like look at that armored knight, he's got steel all over his body, and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we like these metaphors, but why do you have armor on? You have armor on because you think that the world can hurt you, right? You think that you're vulnerable. Mm. That's the only reason to put armor on. It mm-hmm. slows you down. It makes you slower. It's hot. You have to carry it the whole way. You're not as mobile. Heart you're not as open. free. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to dance mm-hmm. when you got 200 <laughs> pounds of chain mail and fucking plate armor on you, right? You could do the robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, it. exactly. Like that's not a good way to live when actually in truth, you know, there's a recognition of, of our own invulnerability. Right. You know, we are yeah. consciousness embodied. Yeah, right, the body's squishy, you know, but we're not actually putting armor on our body. We're putting armor on the invulnerable part. Mm-hmm. We're putting armor on the part that's not squishy. We're putting armor on the consciousness, which mm-hmm. by nature, it can't be dented, scratched, harmed that's if true. we embrace that. So we got to take all that off. And then it's the judge, too, that we always have on our shoulder from oh. our father, from society. Yeah. You know, we get love when we perform well and we internalize that. And the judge is just a savage force in everybody's life yeah. and in men's life in particular. It has this kind of male archetype many, many times, but it could be both. I mean, I, I think the judge haunts us all. But for, for the man, the judge is always telling you you're not good enough, you're not worthy you know, I know so many people who are now in their 20s with massive sexual difficulties, mm. like man, massive sexual difficulties, like, and they're in the prime of their thriving yeah. testosterone, right? And they're having tons of trouble in bed. And, you know, it's because of all of the pressure of the judge and what society has said about yeah. about sexuality. First of all, no one has taught anything reasonable about sexuality at all. It's not just like all. we're not going to talk about it. Figure it out. Use a condom. Yeah. Or and then just okay. Go watch porn, what? Which is yeah. So or, yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you have porn as your, your model. Like uh-huh. you know these guys who are, have a, basically an invincible penis. Right. Right. So that's Women the who idea. Just love being and then tortured, basically. Right. Right. <laughs> and then you have like all of the songs and all of the idea. Like uh, if you aren't that guy, your woman's going to go out and find another man. And that means that you're not worthy enough mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And there's just all this pressure and misunderstanding and the judge gets in. As soon as you, the judge starts talking to your penis, good luck. Yeah. Like, see ya. I know. But women you know? do the same thing. We just can fake it better. You right, know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You don't have, you just, you just have the ability to, you know, yeah, keep going. Yeah. Right? But oh, that inner critic, that inner judge is brutal. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. So you got to just, you got to cultivate that self-love, that self-invincibility, you know, and just recognition of like, it's enough to just be that spark of consciousness in a body, Mm -hmm. that unique spark, you know, Mm -hmm. that's enough. That's enough. That's worthy of love right there. Mm -hmm. That's worthy of everything. You don't need to prove anything to anybody. You're alive. Yeah. That's worthy. Yeah. 
you know, fuck whatever happened in the past, forgive all that, you know, let all that wash away. You're not that same person, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's the key. And that's the way to silence the judge is just, you know, there's nothing to judge. Mm -hmm. I am everything. I am consciousness. I am creation. I'm all the dark. I'm all the light. I am the choices that I make, you know, and then it's a hard task. But if you get there, then that's when you're on the way to being the wild man or the sacred masculine because then you realize once you have that love for yourself all you want to do is pour love and yeah if if a robber breaks into your house sure you know if he's trying to hurt your family take him out that's fine that's part of the masculine too you're a protector you know but you don't do it with anger you don't do it with malice you do it with this is an unfortunate tortured soul who's trying to impinge upon my freedom i'm not going to allow that to happen Mm. But I'm not going to do it out of anger. Yeah, you know, it's like a, it's like the story of um, I may have told this on a podcast once before, but there's a story of a samurai who got an order from a shogun to cut the head off a thief, go to this thief's house and cut the head off a thief who is stealing and, and causing mayhem in his little fiefdom or whatever. So the samurai goes to this this thief's house, and the thief is just a real real asshole and he's like oh you're coming to kill me and he spits in the samurai's face right as he's pulling out a sword and the samurai sheaths the sword and leaves the house and the thief's thinking to himself man yeah samurai's a pussy you know i got him i got him good you know i spit in his face he didn't want any piece of me and uh so another week later the samurai comes back to the same man's house opens the sword the thief spits in his face again and the samurai doesn't flinch. And he says, hey, well, what happened? Last time I spit in your face and you left. And the samurai said, well, last time you got me angry. And then he cuts his head off. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the point being wow. that, you know, he wasn't willing to execute his mission with anger. Like right. that emotion would have spoiled the act. Right. Of what, he still had to do that act, you know, but it's how you do it. It's the reasons why mm-hmm. you're doing it. Where it's coming from. Where it's like, coming yeah. from. Yeah. You know, like all actions should be done out of love and, and pity, really. If, it, if there's something that comes to you that has to be dealt with, yeah. it's, I'm sorry, right. but I still have to do this. Yeah. You know, and I think that's where people get it, get it twisted. They think, oh, yeah, you're going to be all love. Well, what happens when someone attacks you? Well, you do what you have to do. It's just why you're doing it. It's just understanding, I'm sorry I have to do this, but you're forcing me to do this. I'm not going to surrender my life, my freedom to you. Mm -hmm. That's not my mission. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you derail my mission, but I'm not going to do anything to you out of malice or anger. You know, like that aspect of the aggressive side doesn't need to be there. That's the shadow. Yeah, or to prove anything. Or to prove anything, like how tough I am or what a good assassin I am. Or I was using that same metaphor, but... You know, so and that's and that's the way you you can still be anything. There's no limitations on what you want to be. You can be a UFC fighter. You can be all of these things mm-hmm. in the sacred masculine. It's just why are you doing it? Right. You know what are you bringing to that? And that's the that's the key. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So okay, a couple of thoughts running through my head. So going back to what you were saying about knowing that we are one, we are consciousness, we are love. Like that's the ultimate thing we're all here to learn and remember. Right. Actually, not here to learn. Remember. Because right. we know it when we're born. Sure. So it's just like removing all the layers. And when when you were talking about that, when a man does that inside himself, he's able to create presence. Like, And the feminine can feel that. Like mm-hmm. it feels safe. Not like you're my safety, you're going to save me. Because I think we can play out the savior thing. Yeah. Like a lot of men really go for um, projects. Like, I'm going to go rescue this damsel in distress. The attraction to the hot mess yeah, ex- you mentioned at exactly, the very start of Exactly, which, you know, can make for great sex. But other than that, like, it's going to be kind of a nightmare going down the road mm-hmm. because then your mission becomes fixing her and you're distracted. That's how the ma- masculine gets distracted, by trying to, to save. Um, but when a man has that kind of presence, it's like the feminine can relax in that and be that wild woman because she knows the man can hold. Yeah. you know, that space. And that's the dance. That's yeah. the beauty in it. And it doesn't mean we're like apeshit crazy all the time. It doesn't mean that at all. But it gives the feminine the freedom of that range of expression, mm. which I think has been so 
so suppressed and what I think is so attractive about the feminine yeah. is that beautiful range. I mean, we all have it inside of us, but as women, there's there's a way that we express it and embody it in, in a beautiful way. So I'd say to women out there too, like find that wild woman. Oh, like 100%. find her. She's amazing. And emotional mastery is part of your birthright. You know? Oh, and yeah. that's like the most beautiful thing that I see in the people that I know who've embraced that sacred feminine is it's they can see into the turbulence of your waters yeah. and just know things. Yeah. And they just if you can come with presence so you're not throwing up crazy distracted signs, then they have they have that deeper intelligence of just like I see you. Mm-hmm. I see what's going on, and you don't need to say anything. Mm-hmm. And it's like this beautiful communication of support, mm-hmm. you know, and and vice versa, where the man can see the see the winds all stirred up and just kind of hold it peacefully and not lose his bearings and yeah. ground and just all right. I yeah. see this, and it's this kind of dance where both can see into each other because they've reached their own stillness. Yeah. I had, I'll give kind of an example, like as an example of that. I had a, um, having the stuff go on in my house and had a break in. My alarm went off in the middle of the night and I live alone. It was really, really scary for me. It took the police 50 minutes to get to my house. And as a woman, that's, that's just scary to feel like you're alone in your house is broke, being broken into. And I talked to a couple men about it and, you know, a lot of them were like, it's, it's bullshit. It took the police to get there so long and you need to get a daughter. You know, like there, there was a reaction. And then I had dinner with a man who's done a lot of this kind of work. He's done a lot of self-work, masculine, feminine work, and he's just really anchored and grounded in his masculine. And he just sat there and listened to me as I told the story. And he said, that must have been so scary for you. Like I can just feel how scary that was. And I don't even remember what he said, but he just held in presence and just let me share about it and didn't try to fix it, wasn't problem solving, didn't say anything that was scaring me more. Mm -hmm. He wasn't reactive. Mm -hmm. He was just present with me so that I could relax. Mm -hmm. And that's just a small example, but that's that's kind of what we're talking about here is that ability just to hold, you know? And, And I think as women, we have to be responsible for not... Um, making anyone else responsible for fixing us. Right. Like not thinking it's anybody else's job, especially a man, to give us our identity, to solve our problems, to quote unquote take care of us, um, but really appreciate the masculine for all the amazing things that does have to offer. Yeah. And I think one of the issues too is as emotion is a language for women that they understand, a lot of times when men are withdrawn from that. Yeah. You know, women will try to draw that out in any form possible. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, give me something. Yeah. Give Judge, me criticize, some, give me pick. Something. Yep. Get, uh-huh. You know, so they'll draw out anger, this kind of thing, rather than just like really getting deep in the stillness mm-hmm. and like looking into the heart mm-hmm. and seeing. And then uh, the emotion will come. It if will. It's there, it'll come. You don't need to yank it out because whatever if you're in there yanking and pulling pieces you're going to pull the more wrong armor. thing out more, or yeah yeah and yeah. create more armor mm-hmm. too you know you got someone in there fishing around trying to yank stuff out of your heart you're gonna yeah <laughs> exactly you know and so it's that's that's i think the the true power of the of the potential sacred feminine yeah. and i've seen that happen many times you're you're able to do that with me mm-hmm. you know like so there's every podcast I get emotional <laughs> that we're on just because you hold that you hold that space. And mm-hmm. there's many of the other great teachers that I've had, you know, mm-hmm. feminine teachers, they hold a space where it just allows whatever I'm processing to come out. It's not that you're, uh, you know, coming up with these masterful psychological questions that are probing and it's just mm-hmm. you have the space and you see and just mm-hmm. being seen is is enough. And yeah. then in the contrary for the man, just being anchored, being still, not trying to do anything. You know, that's the converse. And that's the fucking dance. And you get that. Damn, life is fun. And it's it sweet. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, we just want to be seen. Yeah. And that feels so good. It feels so good to see someone. It feels so awesome to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Likewise. Likewise. Well, this was fun. Yeah, always. And I just have to... Acknowledge a few things. Okay. First, that poem that you wrote in response, like, holy shit, 
that was amazing. I mean, I was blessed that you shared it with me and I had to, I had to read it and then come back to it and read it and really, really take it in. So thank you for putting that out You're there welcome. because that is just, it's beautiful and it touches a place deep inside of me. And I just want to acknowledge you for being a man who really lives with conviction and vision and passion and is also deeply committed to doing the work. And you, Aubrey, are really anchoring the sacred masculine and it's so inspiring. And it just, it gives me such like a feeling of, of warmth and love inside because to see it embodied through you and to get to be your friend on this journey, I'm just so grateful. Oh, I'm very honored and flattered that, that you see that. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, for people listening out here, it's not, I'm not there every day, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to hold it as much as possible. It's my ideal, and I, t I definitely touch it sometimes. And other times, I'm, you know, out. I don't know, being Shrek the ogre out yeah. in the woods. Well, you're still human. Out, I mean, last time I know? checked, you're still human. Totally. But and it's just it's so inspiring and refreshing because a lot of people might see on it and see you as this CEO and like awesome tats and all that kind of stuff. And you have this other aspect, this very holistic. Like you get why you're here. On a, on a bigger level because it's not just about what we create in our businesses and all those yeah. things it's about it's about raising the consciousness right indeed yeah and starting with the inside Ex you know? exactly as within so without that's, and everything that's, that's manifested game. externally has manifested externally because of the, the in, work i put in work. internally and mm -hmm. that's the probably the best advice you know anybody can have if you want things to chain externally go inside so true go inside well, thank you, Christine. It's yeah. an honor. It's a pleasure. People, please follow Christine. She's got like Britney Spears hanging, following <laughs> with her. Got Ryan Seacrest talking about her. You know, just jump on the Christine Hassler train. Aww. It's never too late. Jump never on, too late. The train's the always Christine going. Train. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. So much love. I will be back shortly. Bye bye.